Hello, uh, I'm a machine learning engineer within Computer Vision. In this video, I want to show what I think is the two main approaches for self-driving cars. And I want to also summarize when they will be available on the market. And I also want to give a little bit a guess about when I think that Tesla will upgrade their cameras to high resolution sensors. So let's get started. As I see it, as I said, I think there are two main approaches to reach self-driving cars. And with self-driving car, I mean that you're sitting in the back seat and there's no one in the front seat driving and that the car has to be able to stop on its own in the side of the road or go to a safe parking slot somewhere if there is a problem. So the first approach, as I see, is a mass data approach, which we know that Tesla and Mobileye, for example, are using. So it relies on having relatively cheap sensors mounted around in the car that um, you therefore can sell to very many customers. And the approach uh, works like that, that you collect data from these cars and send it back to the cloud and process it and improve the software over time and send it back to the cars iteratively. So in Tesla's case, we know that they are uploading videos when there's a problem or when the driver of the car wants to upload a video and back for inspection of the engineers. And we know that with Mobilize approach is more that they create in the car an abstract representation of the world with vectors for the lanes, road boundaries, free space. And they can upload this low level abstract representation that doesn't need many kilobytes to the cloud. And there they can construct a 3D map of the world, so to say. So they can crowdsource a HD map in Mobilize case. So they use crowdsource data in different approaches. Both concepts are relying on that we can have very many cars on the roads at all times, building maps or collecting edge cases as in Tesla's case. And then we have the quite opposite rich data approach that is used, for example, by Waymo, Cruise, and also Mobileye with their robot taxis. And here the idea is instead to have very expensive sensors mounted in optimal positions of the car. So for example, in Waymo's case, they have high resolution cameras with really large lenses and sensors sitting high above the roof. And you can imagine that then we can also see over the cars which are next to us and see to the second line of cars. We can of course also see small objects far away better if we are, have our sensors quite high mounted like this. Um, and uh, they also have very many different sensor modalities. For example, the very expensive LiDAR sensors. Waymo has five different LiDARs on the car. And there's of course nothing yet you can sell to every person around uh, the world. Um, the same is the case for Cruise and for uh, mobilized robot taxis. So here the idea is rather that you perfect driving in a city center or something like that. And um, maybe it, you can expand from there, but that's at least where they are starting. So I will come a bit more now into the details how these approaches differ. So with the mass data approach, as I said, you can crowdsource user data and do system testing with the end user, as in Tesla's case. Uh, it's much easier to scale once it's working. You can just send the software to many more cars and it's going to work there also. In Tesla's case, uh, they don't need HD maps, and in Mobilize's case, they are building HD maps automatically with the customers. Uh, so they don't need to invest in uh, data mapping cars. And then there are some cons though, with a mass data approach, and that's you can imagine that if you get a little bit reduced uh, quality images uh, that are taken with cameras that are quite small uh, with a small lens and doesn't uh, get so much light as a large camera can get, you have a bigger challenge on the machine learning side for perception. I think that you can rely a little bit less on machine learning for perception if you have very good sensors and very many different sensors because you get a lot of things for free, so to say, with the sensor data. There is also one more con, and but it's only relevant if you want to make cars which are maybe a thousand times safer than an average human or something like that, because then we might need sensors which are superhuman, like there are animals who has uh, sensors which are not only vision but other things. And uh, if you really want to make something that is a thousand or ten thousand times safer than an average human, we might need really superior sensors. This is a little bit open question, I think, but that's um, one con at least. For the rich data approach, there are some pros, as I already mentioned. The less reduced need for machine learning for perception. And uh, also when it comes to seeing things far away, for example, if there could be a tire lying on the road at 250 meters ahead of us, lost from, for example, a truck, we can imagine that it's much easier to see it if we have a very high resolution image with maybe 5, uh, 12 megapixel with a really high quality lens that gets a lot of light into it. Um, and one thing that I also think uh, Waymo likes to mention is that it's easier to annotate the data automatically if you have all of these sensors. 
So in the same way as Tesla is building up their ground truth automatically from their surround view system, uh, that also Waymo can do. But Waymo has even more sensors that can uh, be compared and triangulated to create a 3D world automatically. So they might even be able to get away with even fewer data annotators to save cost. And uh, one <laughs> big con with a rich data approach is of course that you need professional drivers for creating the maps. And the maps are also less frequently updated. And maybe the biggest con of them all for the rich data approach is that when the mass data approach is working, and we can imagine that it will at least work maybe in 10 years from now or five years from now, then you could argue that unless people really care very much about safe cars, super safe cars, I mean, that are a hundred or a thousand times better than a human, uh, then they might not really ask for this kind of safety. And uh, they might be fine with the uh, cars which are 10 times safer than an average human. Then all of these sensors might not be needed. However, um, it must be said that the rich data companies, they can of course scale down on their sensors when they get it to work and uh, kind of approach a little bit the mass data approach later on. So they could see the rich data approach a little bit as a way of learning uh, how to get into the mass data approach in the future. I don't know uh, if that is the case, but I could imagine that this could be the case. Let's jump on to the quite a bit more exciting topic maybe, and that's when the, those cars are coming. Uh, we are in 2022 now, so if we talk about level four, so that is then again, no driver needed, and you can sit in the back seat. You can send your child in the back seat to school with no adult in the car. Uh, this level four definition, if you apply this one, then we can say that Waymo One has already managed this in Phoenix in the US uh, in 2020, so that's uh, two years ago. But it's a very small limited area. But level four is uh, not, it doesn't need to work all over the world. Then we talk, call it level five. Level four could be uh, limited to a small area or limited to a certain max speed or a different weather condition. It could be that they have level four, even though it doesn't work when it's snowing, they can call it level four as long as they only activate it during daytime. And then when it comes to Tesla, Elon Musk has recently said in a podcast with Lex Friedman on the 28th of December that it's looking very likely that it will be next year. And this podcast was uh, last year, in the end of last year. So that means that Elon Musk believes that based on the data that he has seen so far of how fast the Tesla FSD is improving, that he can have these uh, driverless cars on the road uh, this year. I would assume towards the end of the year. Uh, but he was also saying in the podcast that, yeah, uh, we also need legal approval and maybe we want to make we want to make it two to three times safer than an average human and so on so i think a little bit between the lines what i read at least was the rather 2023 what elon musk believes i don't know but uh, things can go wrong right so maybe 2023 is a more realistic uh, year for tesla full self-driving but um, somewhere here maybe very late this year hopefully I mean, we need it as soon as possible, right? Because as soon as the cars can be two to three or even 10 times safer than an average human, we can save so many lives. It's, it's incredible. So we need these self-driving cars urgently to save lives and uh, avoid that people get uh, hurt in the traffic. And then we have the Mobileye uh, Robotaxi also approach, which they will try out in Germany and Israel this year. And uh, Professor Amnon, who is leading Mobileye, which is owned by Intel, he said in CES here um, just a few weeks ago that um, they will be able legally to remove the drive from the car this year, 2022. So what this sounds like to me is that he is hoping for level four robotaxi this year. Um, and he also wants to deploy customer level four cars. And uh, he has already gotten an uh, agreement with Seeker and Geely to have these cars on the road in 2024. So um, con Mobileye wants to have consumer self-driving cars, uh, level four cars on the road in 2024. By the way, in another video in the future, I want to make a prediction and try to gather as much data as I can from how often these systems currently have disengagements and try to extrapolate to the future to see when uh, we <laughs> approach uh, the time in between errors that the human has, or two to three times that, for example. So it should, I mean, if we would have enough data and we can estimate how much they improve over time, 
Uh, if we don't think about step improvements, it should be possible, I think, to estimate this kind of stuff to some extent. And I guess that's the kind of data that Elon looks to when he says that he can uh, take out the driver from the loop uh, already this year, 2022. Okay, an overview of the current cameras that Tesla is using. Uh, as I think most of you know, they have three cameras looking forward with 1.2 megapixel. So uh, they have different lenses. So one of them see very wide and one, one see very, very narrow. And the benefit of making a lens that sees very narrowly is that it's becoming telescopic and you can see very far away, so like 250 meters. However, I will show in the next slide that I think the 250 meters is mostly for big objects. Stay around for that. They have a side looking camera mounted in the B pillar which uh, some people on YouTube has argued is a bit way back here because you have to stick out maybe the nose in the crossing if there's a hidden uh, view in the crossing and there's cars approaching quickly from the side. So you could argue that it would maybe be better to have this B-pillar side camera mounted here somewhere or why not even here in front. Um, there's pros and cons of course. Uh, here would be lower but, but here might be better at least because it's the same height and more in front. So they use 1.2 megapixel cameras to my understanding. Again, there could be some errors in this presentation and I don't take any responsibility for that. This is my understanding of how it's working. In addition, they are also using ultrasonic sensors to sense objects close by, like 8 meters, which I assume is very helpful, for example, in parking lots and so on. And here is a little bit sneak peek of a future video I want to do, uh, where I have simulated with uh, Python uh, first to the left, the LiDAR, um, and it's a, it is a road, and this is a big building, and there's cars here in different ranges, and then there's also a tires uh, positioned at, uh, I think it's 50, 150, and 250 meters. So the little bit problem for the camera that Tesla is using to see very far ahead is that if I have made my calculations correctly, when we look at this little tire here, and uh, every dot here is actually a pixel in the 1.2 megapixel camera, uh, that they use for the Tesla narrow forward camera. If I've done my calculations correctly, only six uh, pixels uh, hit a uh, lying down tire on the road. And if you're then driving like 120 km per hour on a wet highway, it can easily take uh, 200 meters until we, until we manage to stop the car. So you need to be able to see these tires ideally 250 meters in advance. And with only six pixels, you could argue that it will be quite difficult for the machine learning because uh, tires are black, kind of. The road is kind of black. And to uh, take out signal from noise with so few pixels might be very difficult. I would say that typically you would want to have at least uh, 50 pixels or so on an object to reliably detect it. Uh, yeah, we jump on. I'm soon wrapping up here, but um, stay around if you want to see a little bit more details from the competitors to Tesla. So mobile I, uh, they want to also do a consumer level 4 system, as I said, in 2024 together with uh, Geely. And they are using four, seven far range cameras. You can see they are sitting here around the car. And the resolution is unknown, I didn't manage to find it, but I think it's at least 4 megapixels. They have also four short range parking cameras around here, which will be incorporated, I believe, in the, maybe the same neural network as uh, far range ones or in different network, but somehow fused. And the short range parking cameras are of course helpful for like the blind spot, for example, exactly in the front of the car or here to the side of the car and so on. So um, then they also have a front facing LiDAR. I assume they will select the, try to find a bit cheaper LiDAR to put there because LiDARs can be very expensive. And they also want to have radars mounted around the car. So in the forward direction, they want to have a triple redundancy of the sensors uh, with both camera, LiDAR and radar. But to the sides, they will only have the double uh, redundancy with only the radars and the cameras. But what I understood from Professor Amnon was that he wants to try to train the radars so that they predict what a LiDAR would have seen. So I assume they would have some measurement cars where they have also LiDAR looking to the side and they can use this as ground truth. So train the neural network to take as inputs a radar and produce as output a LiDAR representation. Anyways, and, and what they want to do here, very, very short, is to create <laughs> A redundancy between two things. They want to create a redundancy between the camera based self driving car system. So they want to try to drive the car autonomously only with the cameras. And they want to try to drive the car autonomously only with the LiDAR and the radars as a separate second group. And then they want to combine these two self driving cars to reduce uh, error. 
and simplify the verification because they can verify each of these two subsystems on a reduced amount of data and claim if these systems are independent that the whole system uh, has a very 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 low chance of making errors without driving a long time so <laughs> that's my understanding there uh, interestingly also this crowdsourcing of the HD maps as I described before so you can see lanes even if they are covered by snow and of course you will never get a surprise when it comes to which lane is for what and so on because everything will be known to the car so you will always be able to drive to the correct uh, lane last slide now um, looking then at the Waymo uh, rich data approach <laughs> and it's uh, really amazing how many sensors they have I think uh, on the roof and on the side of the car and everywhere and also a bit unknown what all the things are I would say it's looking almost like a spaceship right um, but anyways they have 29 cameras to my understanding with up to 500 meters range so I must assume that this is quite good cameras with large uh, lenses and a big sensor um, maybe more than 10 megapixel I'm not sure and they also have a main 360 degree LiDAR on top of the car, which is quite characteristic with this uh, logotype uh, going around. And they claim that this LiDAR can see 300 meters, which is really impressive because a LiDAR has a few beams that it sends out and uh, far away those beams will be quite sparse. So you need to send out a lot of LiDARs here uh, on top of each other to be able to see small things uh, 300 meters away. Uh, but they have developed this LiDAR, I think, uh, at least partly in-house, and they claim that they can see 300 meters, and that it can help for a truck, for example, to stop for a small object on the road far away. So that is really interesting. And then they also have four short-range parameter LiDARs mounted around the vehicle, and they also have multiple radars. So they go for the camera LiDAR radar approach, and as I said, this, to my understanding, is the only company who has now a level 4 system in operation right now on the streets so to me it seems like if you have so many sensors as this and super good HD maps and so on you can make something work for a small area at least the question now if they can scale it uh, really quickly to many cities and uh, the question is also if someone succeeds with a mass data approach for example Tesla then they will maybe get a problem because the customer might not care if he's going to this car or a Tesla as long as he's much safer than he would be with a taxi driver. So, But this is uh, all open for the, uh, discussion. Uh, we will have to see how the future plays out. But it's extremely exciting. I think that there are so many good promising initiatives. And uh, we need one of those initiatives to really scale fast, as I said, to really reduce the amount of accidents on the roads. So thanks and please like this video if you liked it. And please subscribe if you want to see. I plan to do more videos uh, on the self-driving car topic because I have many more slides uh, prepared or in preparation on the topic and some more Python uh, simulations of LiDAR beams and camera pixels. So, so um, have a really nice day and thank you for listening. Bye bye.